Hi everybody, it's Ray from Empress and Power. The future is POW. Are you ready to be a POW woman or a POW warrior for God and the Holy Spirit? A lot of people ask me, well, what does POW really mean? Okay, so POW means simply this. It's Well, it started out because um, I was thinking about having a little group gathering for my Empress and Power uh, evolution uh, ministry. And I was like, well, what's a good little quick way of kind of expressing that, um, like for my little conferences? And the first one I thought of was Press Pow, like Empress and Power, Pow, you know. But as I started thinking more about the Pow, I said, well, wow, you know, wow. <laughs> what does that mean? And so as I prayed on it, God gave me the acronym Prophetic, Overcoming, Winning, so that's P-O-W, and then the other W would be for woman, if you're a female, or warrior, if you're a male, because God said that this is for both men and women. And then the H stands for in the Holy Spirit. So we are prophetic, overcoming, winning women or warriors in the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? I'm really excited about that, and thank you so much for joining me. I'm really, really, truly grateful for that. So... Today, uh, I want to dive into the miraculous you, um, being who God created you to be. And so I'm really excited about this. Um, honestly, let me tell you this, and this is kind of a little snippet of, you know, living a prophetic life um, and what kind of sets you apart from just the normal day-to-day -day when you truly become aware and understanding of your identity in Christ and you begin walking in operation fully of your spiritual gifts and taking authority in them, then your life begins to uh, change and transform. And more of the miraculous in your life becomes evident. You begin to tap into it and see it and flow with it. And that's what it means in scripture when it says we live and we move and we have our being in God. So I was sitting down, I grabbed my Bible. And I and I like to I like this Bible because it's the NIV and the Message translation, and it's a wonderful, wonderful study Bible because you have the NIV right next to the Message, and the Message can be um, it's more like uh, day to day language, and then uh, NIV is more um, basically universally accepted as the uh, translation of the Bible next to the King James, of course, um, Holy Bible, which, by the way, little side note, I'm a descendant of, which is kind of interesting, um, through my great-grandmother, who was born in Scotland. So, anyway, I, picked, I, I, put, I grabbed my Bible, and I just laid it down, and it fell open. And so... In my mind, I was already asking God, okay, God, I, um, I know that there's something that you want me to share with the people today. Um, it had been pressing in my spirit, actually, when I had a conversation with my mom a few minutes ago, and we were talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and I was sharing with her um, some things. So I grabbed the Bible, I set it down, and it just opened up to Ecclesiastes 3. And it's the... Um, the scripture that talks about there's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot. And it's talking about God's divine timing and how everything under the sun is in alignment to his timing and to his will. And so as I read that, I said, okay, well, how does that correlate with what I, what you had pressed in my spirit from that little conversation I had with my mom today in the car? How does that correlate? And as I read it, I was completely astonished. It aligns perfectly 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 with what uh, God was speaking to me so I'm gonna read the part that really jumped it out uh, jumped it uh, made my spirit leap and I, I want to share that with you so it's Ecclesiastes 3 9 is where it will start and this is going to be the NIV translation okay what does the worker gain from his toil I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men and women, by the way. Okay. Yet they cannot fathom 
what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for men or women than to be happy and do good while they live. That everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all of their toil. This is a gift from God. I know that everything that God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that man will revere him. Whatever is has already been born. And God will call the past to account. So what what is has already been, excuse me, what is has already been and what will he has he has been before. So whatever is has already been and what will be has been before whatever is has already been and what will be has been before isn't that amazing and so I really had an aha moment right there it was like complete confirmation of what God was has been speaking to me so as I was sharing with my mom today, okay, everyone and everything has been created by God. Uh, we know this even scientifically because everything that is that has um, that exists on this planet in this universe has a divine order and construction that only someone uh, had to like a master creator had to create. It's not possible. It's like finding a book and saying, oh, the book just kind of appeared. No, the book had to have a master designer in order to craft it and form it and create it and fill it. And that is exactly the same way we know. And there's a lot more scientific, you know, ex uh, explicit, you know, um, explanation to that. But basically, in a nutshell, that is how we know that we, the world, everything was created by God. Okay. And so I'm going to have to charge this. Hold on. Okay. There. I'm going to hold it too. <laughs> I should have charged it a little bit more before I started. Sorry. Okay. And so everything was created by God. So because we were created by God, his DNA, his blueprint, um, who he is, is, is imprinted, is grafted, is part and particle of the very fiber of our being. And in the word it does say, whatever is, has already been, and what will be, has been before. So... We live eternally in God. Just like the cells of our body, our skin cells. Did you know they're constantly in evolution? They're constantly cre uh, creating. They, they live, they die, they live, they die, they live, they die, they live, they die. And they're constantly reproducing. Even cancer, unfortunately, even cancer is a mass, you know, just fast mass overgrowth of cells that just have gone havoc. They're just like mass reproducing out of order, out of alignment. And so, so we are the children of God. We are his cell, his DNA, his everything that he is, his, the fiber of who he is, his essence, his spirit is in us. And yes, it is also in every living thing. Okay. But we have been given dominion under God over every living thing. So every living thing bows to the spirit of God in us. We don't bow to the spirit of God in them. Aha. So that inherently right there, the foundation of witchcraft and everything crumbles. Also, 
Um, whether you like it or not, you're a child of God. Whether you like it or not, the power of the Holy Spirit is in you. It may be dormant. It may be unrealized. You may be not awakened, but it's there. We have people searching and seeking answers to understand more fully the power of the Holy Spirit that they were born with. Um, that intuition, that kind of just like knowing, uh-oh, that gut instinct, okay? Our spidey sense is tingling. It's like, you're a demigod, you know? <laughs> like you're Hercules or, you know, in Moana, you know? <laughs> you know, thank you, you know? <laughs> you are created as the son, the daughter of God. But if you do not understand your true identity in alignment with God, then that spirit that's within you, either you will become opposed to it, which cre creates disease, depression, mental disorders, and all kinds of um, suffering and pain and misery. Also, uh, unfulfilled promises, uh, unfulfilled uh, dreams, poverty. When, when you're, when you, and that's when you're opposed to it because you don't understand it. Then, or if you do start to say, "Oh, look, hmm, what are these gifts? What, what is this uh, uh, understanding? What? Oh, I see the world so differently. Why is it that I um, feel so in tune with nature? I feel so uh, aware." of the spirit the spiritual world and and uh oh why do i feel so pulled and drawn to things that are above just the tangible experience of the earth what what is this and then satan has his own ways of explaining that satan has his own ways of defining that satan then defines you in ways that actually uh prostitute those spiritual gifts uh, also actually um deceive you and steer you away from utilizing them uh, the way that you should. Sorry. So you begin to become lost and because you don't have your true understanding, you don't have a true definition and identity of what those things are. Um, it's like, okay, going into a restaurant and you seeing all these wonderful delicacies, this wonderful food, you know, and you see something and you say, oh, look at that. I wonder what that is. And I come along and I say, oh, that is something very, very special. It's very beautiful. You'll love it. You, when you taste it, it'll just melt in your mouth. Um, that is called uh, follow majeure. You need to try to follow majeure. And you take a bite of it, and it's, it's a little squishy. It's a little bit different. But, you know, it's edible. You eat it, and you're thinking, oh, this is follow majeure. And you come to find out it's monkey brains. So, I mean, you really, I mean, you're going to take the word of just, you know anybody at that point to define what some what the gifts are in your spirit or or who you are or or how or trying to find a way to identify yourself the best way and what Jesus Christ came to do basically is say hey this is who you are i am a reflection of who you are and where you came from follow me this is how you, you utilize those gifts. This is how you sustain and create your life with those gifts. This is the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. Do you understand? That is salvation. Because when you are walking around in the world and you are looking in the dark to define who you are, you become lost and confused. When you look to Christ, who is the light, who is the revealer, who is the lack burner, who is the one that has truly epitomized all that you can be, all that you were created to be, all that you were patterned after 
because he was the first. So he's come and he says, here, let me show you the way. And the way is through the cross, through the death and crucifixion of your flesh so that you can step into the glorious creation that you are in the kingdom of God in spirit and in truth. So as I was um, reading this, I was like, oh, okay. So that kind of, to me, it confirms it. It confirms that, yes, you know, what ever is is already has already been um what will be has been before so yes we were created with the holy spirit in us yes we were created as children of god yes these gifts are there and if we take them and we you do it, we have prophetic gifts and we use them to be a psychic medium or we use them to be um, a witch or uh, do craft spells or anything like that. We can lend our spirit to those things and they can manifest because we are children of God. But the manifestation of it will be a violation of the law of who we truly are. And when we violate the law of who we truly are, we get out of position of what God wants us to be. And we get out of position of our destiny and our future. And then we cannot completely fulfill the plan of creation that exists within us. I literally can see us like, like I see a, a singular person and within them is like the entire earth the entire creation the blueprint of the uh, of the world living within us living within our being I know there's been times when I have um, in prayer and worship um, just praying for someone or praying for the nation or my community or the world and I will see with the mind of God I, I will see the angels standing over the earth commanding the hurricanes or uh, protecting people from harm I will see them ignite a fire anointing of the Holy Spirit in someone I will see the power of God manifest the Holy Spirit blow into the room I will see Jesus Christ himself walk into the room and the and, and, and just the power that exudes from him bows me to the ground where I can't even stand up straight in his presence God is so real Jesus is so real and the Spirit of God lives in us, which is just, I'm sorry about that, is so amazing. But the Spirit of God is in us, and it's in us whether we accept it or not. Jesus came to, to, to wake us up and say, hey, this is in you, and this is what it's for. This is what you're to do with it. This is how you can be successful with it. This is how you can help others be successful with it. This is how you find your purpose. This is how you can identify and understand yourself. This is how you can protect yourself. So Jesus Christ came to save us because we were out there with these gifts of the Spirit and we were creating all kinds of false religions with it, all kinds of pagan idol worship with it, all kinds of witchcraft chasing after money and adultery and creating empires that would fall to the ground and fall upon their own sword like Saul and destroy themselves. And so God said, enough is enough. Son, come. You were the first. Show them. Show them the way. You are my first. You were my best. 
show them the way to know that they were made a blueprint from you let them see how they were truly created to be show them what love really is is sacrificing for others so I, I just wanted to take a moment and just share I'm not going to spend a long length of time but I just wanted to share a little bit to with you that you know whether you say I accept you Lord Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior or not the power of the Holy Spirit still is there within you um, and that is why a lot of people can do like all this new agey stuff um, because they are manipulating the spirit of God within themselves that they were created a fabric of they were created DNA you know from from God's DNA yes it's there yes you know you you are awakened yes you do have these spiritual gifts but you're not protected so demonic spirits are real um, some of the demonic spirits that have been that that exist in the world are created from our own turmoil pain suffering trauma that we have taken that energy and projected out into the world and it has manifested as as like almost like entities that latch on to other people the best way I can explain that and then there are real demonic spirits that were fallen angels that fell when Satan fell as it says in the book of Revelations you know and that have assignments to mislead others um, from knowing their true purpose and identity because of their spiritual jealousy one of the biggest ways they do that is they get in the church and they create division in church in the Christian church with jealousy of others gifts that's the biggest strategy they have of just dividing because what what does Satan do obviously he came to earth because he was jealous of the of humanity I was talking to someone the other day and I had this epiphany that when the serpent you know the great dragon the serpent Satan fell from the sky and with his tail knocked uh, some of the stars which is uh, allegory for angels the fallen angels knocked them to the earth with him some of those angels they began teaching humanity spiritual secrets but they were gifted with these spiritual secret secrets before they were qualified in their walk with God to fully understand first their own identity their own purpose and understand how to protect in themselves and utilize the gifts and who and, and the power of God within them so they were given this stuff like um, illegitimately and that is why all these false religions and things were formed that was the fruit that they ate in the Garden of Eden and that caused them to be shut out of uh, away from the tree of eternal life which was fellowship with Christ Jesus because he is that he was that tree he is that tree eternal life Christ Jesus the Holy Spirit and so they were shut out of that but the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is is the breath of God that gave them life it's still part of them and in them they cultivated all kinds of alchemy and magic and different things that took them away from their true identity in God because they didn't understand it fully but they were given it's like giving a child uh, sitting, a, sitting a person in an airplane in the cockpit of an airplane telling them to fly the plane and they never had a lesson so having these spiritual gifts but not having information and understanding from the Word of God and and understanding by example through Christ Jesus and having a relationship with him because I'm gonna tell you something the Bible is just the tip of the iceberg God through the Holy Spirit gives you even greater wisdom I have been reading my Bible since I was goodness eight or nine years old reading and studying it fervently I love the word. I started in King James Version and at eight years old understood it. So just reading the word 
and fellowshipping and going to church and talking to people and spending time with God. And still, I, I still lost sight of my identity. I still had to search. I still needed time to find who I am and cultivate who I am. So can you imagine like Adam and Eve being given this knowledge that's supposed to make them just like God? And then just taking that and, and creating a, a generation of corruption. It was only like Enoch who walked with God daily who was able to rise above that. So I just, if right now, if you stumble across this video and you are searching for answers to supernatural gifts and understanding of spirit and your identity and you've gotten into auras and uh, new age spiritism, tarot cards, psychic mediums, um, you call yourself an indigo, you think you might be a star seed, you think you might be an empath, you think you might be a healer, you think you might be a psychic. Honey, all of, all of those gifts come from the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ, He came to give you the answers to show you what to do with those gifts, to show you who you are, and how to live a sustained and blessed and miraculous life. That is the best way. The other way will be unsustainable. Witches, they have to craft spells and they have to keep crafting spells and they have to keep buying more material and they have to keep buying herbs and they have to keep buying candles and all that stuff is just a waste of time. It's a lie. It's false. It's, it's flimsy. What really truly will give you a sustained and happy life is following the pattern that Christ has laid out for you and cultivating a relationship with God through His Son and through the power of the Holy Spirit and truly tapping into the anointing that, that is within you, that special gift. And God gives everyone, everyone has the ability to have all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. But for some, uh, certain gifts present themselves to you stronger initially than other gifts. And that's where people start all the labels and things like that. I'm going to take it off the charger and set it down for a minute. There. Okay. Sorry. Uh, that's outside. Okay. Sorry, everybody. I'm back. Yes. Okay, this is what happens when you don't have all the expensive equipment. So make sure you subscribe and like my channel. And then maybe uh, I'll be able to get some advertisement here so I can buy that great equipment. <laughs> and we can have live broadcasts and um, and more uh, and one-on-one and -on -one time. So, But I just wanted to share that with you. Just Christ really is the best way. Jesus Christ really is the best way. I mean, he was... He had he was able to show us how to utilize all the gifts, discernment, prophecy, healing, manifestation, uh, compassion, love, all of those gifts that Christ literally embodied um, apostleship, teaching, wisdom, understanding, faith, all of those gifts. Christ embodied and he was able to uh, show us how to walk in each and every one of them better than any any person in the Bible was able to show better than any person on this earth was was able to show so following other gods and and uh, spiritual leaders and things like that in the past or in history or in mythology None of them are going to completely be able to show you or teach you uh, in the way that Jesus Christ can. I have had experiences um, when I was searching uh, for deeper meaning and understanding because I thought, well, you know, 
okay, this is the Bible, this is church, and this is what people in church say God is, and it just wasn't enough. And truly, it wasn't because they, a lot of times, churches, they just want to bring you to salvation from the Saturday night kind of living, and they stop right there, and they don't always have the time, honestly, to go deep, although sometimes they do, but not everybody. And so... And then not everyone wants to reach out and speak specifically to people that are on other paths. And God has really called me to do that because I have been on that search. That's why God allowed me to go on that search. Um, we even had a conversation about that, uh, about why, you know, about God allowing me to go on that search. He asked me, he said, when I said that I wanted to study more about all these ancient mythologies and religions, he said, are you sure? And I said, yes. And so I embarked on a three year period where I was researching, you know, ancient religions, studying hieroglyphics. I even studied uh, the Bible in Hebrew. Um, I studied, you know, Buddhism, uh, Wicca, everything. Cause I wanted to know. And what I found was, the best wisdom and authority and knowledge came right in here. It was all in here. It was all I needed. <laughs> came full circle. Right? And so, but I, I have such a compassion, though, because I understand what it's like to be searching and seeking and trying to identify find an identification, trying to fully understand and know that you aren't... Um, you are more than what, uh, there is more to know than what sometimes just churches will teach on a Sunday morning. So it really does take a lot of study in the word of God for yourself, um, and prayer and, and building a relationship with God to truly connect and know and understand, um, who God is. So when you are able to fully and no, you can never fully, fully know, but you can get close. And so when you're able to truly get close to God and truly understand him in a way that you both are, are in a joint, you know, in a partnership where it's not just you praying at God or talking at God, but he's talking back to you. You're listening, you're hearing from him daily in your life. And you know, sometimes that could just be something that just to make you smile, um, just, just to show you that he loves you. Yeah, he does that. It's not just, um, uh, it's not condemnation and guilt. You know, God really loves you. I had an experience. I'm gonna share this one experience I had with you. Uh, I remember I was laying on my bed. I was deeply depressed, going through a lot of depression, a lot of searching. And that's where a lot of that searching other stuff came from, just from depression and, and grief. Um, and I was talking to God and I said, God, you know, I don't understand this scripture. It was a scripture where Jesus, he was walking along with the disciples and he saw a fig tree and he was hungry and he wanted to eat and he went to the fig tree and there was no figs on it. So he shriveled up that, you know, the next time they came by, the tree was all shriveled up and dead. And I was like, oh, that's mean. It just didn't have any figs. Someone else had gotten to it. So, you know, or, or it just wasn't bearing fruit or there was some reason. Well, God, that's mean. Why would you destroy that poor, innocent little fig tree? I didn't understand that. It hurt my heart, you know, because I love trees and I love nature and I would literally feel pain, you know, someone pulls a flower out of the ground and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, no, you killed it. Don't you understand? Just for your own vain desire and likes and you want to see something pretty and you're going to watch it slowly die. How dare you? You know? And so, yeah, that's just the way I am. I love nature. And um, so I just didn't understand that. And I remember I was laying there and something very miraculous happened um, as I laid there. And I talked to God, suddenly it was like a light as bright as the sun hovered over my entire being. And I levitated, I levitated from the bed 
At least it felt like that. I don't know if I, I, I still, when I look back, it seems like I really did lift up off the bed and my ears popped, but it could have been just like a spiritual lifting. Like, and I think that's probably what it was, not physical lifting, but I think it was like my spirit like lifted up and, and, but I, I wasn't, all I was aware was that I was elevating, that I was lifting and I felt a pop in my, um, ears and uh i'm sorry if you hear some noise my daughter is kind of laughing in the background in her room uh with her friends but i felt like a, there was like a pop and all of a sudden i heard the voice of god speaking to me with this light i was covered just bathed in this golden light like the sun i felt like i was like in the middle of the sun uh, just shining all around me and God said to me, and it wasn't a loud, like outside voice, but it was an inside voice, but it was loud to me and firm. And it said, I am God and I am the lack burner. Lack cannot be in my presence. And then I was back to myself. And when I, when I heard that, it wasn't fear. I didn't feel fear. I didn't feel scared. I felt complete peace, comfort, protection, and understanding. And at that time, I really had problem with seeing God as, as a, ma a masculine um, energy. I, I was seeking to understand God more as a feminine energy because I'm a woman and I wanted to, I was tired of all this patriarchy, you know, ism and all this stuff. And I wanted to see God more as a masculine, I mean, a, sorry, a feminine energy, like a mothering energy. Like, and I felt like the Holy Spirit was more like mothering because the Holy Spirit is nurturing and wisdom and, and loving and like a mom. And I had trouble with God as a masculine energy because I've been through a lot of rape and trauma in my life. And so when he showed himself to me in a masculine form, you know, identifying himself in a masculine form and saying that this masculine, this masculine energy that I am, that I am father, that I am God, I am daddy, I am Ab Abba, that it is not anything to be afraid of. It's a good thing. I am protecting you, loving you. By burning up lack all around you so that you'll never lack. So that you'll always have plenty. That you'll always be in abundance. That you'll always live in a, in a way that you're able to sustain. Constantly evolving. Constantly growing. Constantly being nourished. Because I burn up all the lack. The negativity. The uh, poverty. The poverty of spirit. The poverty of, uh, of health. The poverty in your heart. The, the emptiness. The void. There is no void in me. I am full. I am, I am complete. And, and nothing incomplete can even be in my presence. And it was just an amazing experience for me um, to come face to face with God in that way and to truly know that God is the spirit of God is a just burns up every lack and I will never lack. I will never lack in any way that I will always as long as I live and move and have my being in him and I follow the ways of Christ because Christ will always show me the way and the truth because he is the light. He is that fiery sun. He is that lack burner. He is that um, which he showed with the story of the fig tree. He is that in our life. And he'll always be there protecting me and loving me, cherishing me, cherishing me, cherishing you, and showing you what to do with your spiritual gifts, showing you how to use them to help yourself and others and fulfill the purpose that he created you to fulfill upon this earth, a purpose of peace, of love, of unity, and of joy and prosperity. So I love you all. Sorry for the little <laughs> technological gifts, but when you really have a real word to give, that those things can happen. But we made it through together. So I want y'all to have a beautiful, Godful day.
I also want you to think about, for some reason, the peacock behind me is just really speaking to me prophetically. And so I just want to take a moment really quickly, prophetically, and say something to you all who are watching. Yes, you are different. Yes, you are unique. Yes, sometimes you stand out from the crowd. You don't need to be ashamed of that difference. You don't need to bow your head down. You don't have to dirty your beautiful, colorful tail. You don't have to um, hide your opulence. Stretch out your feathers. Let them be seen. For they represent the, the beautiful uniqueness, the imprint that God has placed upon you that makes you unique, that makes you special. I love you all so much. You have a blessed and godful day. Bye-bye. Oh, and like and subscribe, please.